Good evening and welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking the time out of your night to join us for this public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing for an application submitted for Turtle Lake Campground in Benzie County. My name is Ryan Blazik. I'm with Eagles Environmental Support Division. I'm just going to be helping to moderate uh, this public hearing tonight. But before we get started, just have a couple things to go through. Uh, first off is our agenda. This is what it's going to look like uh, for the hearing. Uh, we're doing the introduction right now. Uh, the big thing to keep in mind is that there's actually two parts of this hearing tonight. The first part is going to be an informational session where a representative for the applicant will be able to uh, say a few words and provide some information on the project. And then we'll follow that up with a question and answer session. And then at around 6.30 or before, we're going to move on to the official hearing part. And that's where you'll have an opportunity to make a comment or make a statement for the record on this application and project. Uh, everyone will have that opportunity. Uh, but I'll also talk about the other ways that you can make a comment in case you don't want to make a statement tonight, uh, where to find other information, and then who to contact if you have further questions. All right, so a couple things to keep in mind. All lines will be muted uh, during the hearing uh, until it's your turn to talk, and we'll explain how we're going to do that a little bit later. Uh, you can submit your questions using the Q&A box in your Zoom toolbar at any time, uh, we, and, but then we will ask answer those during the Q&A session. So that'll be the opportunity and the time when we will answer those questions. You also have an opportunity to raise your hand and ask them verbally, but again, we'll talk about that later and how we're going to go ahead and do that. And then also we are recording this hearing. So this hearing will be posted on our YouTube channel in a couple days and you'd be welcome to watch it again or send it on to someone else if you'd like. All right, to get things started, I would like to invite uh, our other uh, Eagle staff on the line to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Keenan Cooper. I'm EQA out of the Cadillac District Office covering Benzie County. And good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Joseph Haas, District Supervisor with Eagle Water Resources Division in the Cadillac and Gaylord Field Offices. I supervise field staff covering regulatory resource programs in the 22 counties in the northern lower peninsula. And I just would like to thank you for taking the time to be here this evening. Thanks. All right, thank you both. Uh, so now we're going to go right into the informational session. Uh, we're going to unmute the representative for the applicant, Joe Kwan, but maybe is there anything um, you want to say about the application first, Keenan, before we, while we unmute him? Yes. Uh, so we're here tonight uh, on behalf of an application that was submitted for a Turtle Lake campground for a series of seasonal docks to be installed for a marina to allow boat access and riparian access for the campground. Um, as a result of this project, four permanent docks will be removed. All right, perfect, thanks, thanks, Keenan. All right, it looks like Joe's unmuted, are you there, Joe? I am, can you hear me? We can, we can, thanks for joining us. Um, I have uh, some slides that I think were submitted during the application. Um, you're welcome to, to say whatever you'd like about the project or about the slides I have. Um, and if you want me to change slides, I just guess just let me know. Well, I appreciate that, Ryan. Thank you. Um, I, you know, actually, I'm going to let uh, uh, Keenan talk about the slides. He's probably in a better position uh, to uh, go through the narration uh, from the department's perspective. Uh, but uh, for everyone's benefit, uh, or I guess information, my name is Joe Quant. I'm an attorney. Uh, I represent uh, Keith Bonney in uh, Turtle Lake Campground. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I would, I'm, I'm going to be very brief, but wanted to cover a couple of important points. And that is that in reviewing uh, the public comment history, I think that there is a, a lot of people who are relying on some information from the public notice uh, that uh, isn't uh, uh, intentionally inaccurate, but is based upon uh, certain guidance uh, that the that Eagle uses in, in uh, basically formulating the public notices. First, it needs to be clear that the application here is for 12 boats, not 24, never has been, not 28, uh, it's 12. Uh, Eagle, uh, EGLE needed to call it 24 uh, based on their internal policies related to uh, the dock configuration and dock geometry, not the actual uh, request in the application. The application clearly stipulates that only 12 boat dockage spaces are requested 
And we've also offered that the applicant will stipulate to a permit condition that only 12 boats being docked by the applicant uh, is requested. Um, so there isn't going to be the, uh, the significant increase in boat traffic as a result of the application that a lot of uh, commenters seem to be concerned about. Uh, also, it's important to remember that the intention here is to remove the existing infrastructure, which actually has five docks, and replace that with four docks, which actually uh, covers less surface impact area than the current use. So we're actually talking about a less intense use than currently exists rather than more. Uh, further, the length of the docks into the water is eight to 10 feet less than the current structure. The current structure is 52 feet, and with upland uh, approach, the longest dock in the applicant's proposal will only extend 42 to 48 feet waterward of the ordinary high watermark. So uh, we're talking about less surface area and less length. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, it, you know, seem to be under a misunderstanding that this was going to result in greater impact and greater encroachment waterward of the ordinary high watermark. Uh, also, uh, the proposed dock configuration actually improves the riparian goals of uh, Part 301 and providing access to the water for fishing, swimming, boating, uh, and it also reduces riparian navigation conflicts because it involves fewer structures and less waterward impact, which are all statutory goals of Part 301. Also, it's important to note that fishing especially will be improved, as two of the docks are meant to specifically accommodate uh, fishing access. Uh, the proposed plan also benefits environmental conditions and water quality by removing the treated lumber and rusting permanent infrastructure which currently exists with new docks that will have much less impact uh, to water quality because of their uh, construction materials. Uh, further, the docks will not harm spawning area beds because the docks will be seasonally placed prior to spawning uh, uh, seasons uh, of fish and the docks create better cover habitat keeping the surrounding water cooler and with structure and providing refuge for smaller fish from larger fish. I think every fisherman knows that if you want to catch fish, you find them in areas where there is cooler water with structure, and that is what this project provides. Also, the fact that the docks are seasonal will likewise be better for habitat of reptiles, amphibians, aquatic mammals, and waterfowl uh, than the current uh, existing uh, uh, dock structures. So for all of these reasons, the permit application we believe should be approved because it, number one, does not increase uh, any boat activity or usage on the lake. Number two, reduces the number of docks. Number three, reduces the coverage area of the docks. Number four, reduces the length of docks over the water. Number five, improves riparian access and other riparian rights. Number six, improves navigation and reduces navigation conflicts. Number seven, improves fish habitat. Number eight, improves water quality. Number nine, improves near shore habitat for other aquatic and non-aquatic species. Uh, thus, we think that uh, the project uh, more than satisfies uh, the, uh, the permit criteria under Part 301, uh, and we're happy to uh, provide you know, any meaningful response that the, the department uh, uh, has uh, for you know, questions or anything like that. So thanks, Ryan. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for making that statement. Um... And I still have these slides here, Keenan. Would you just want to say a few words, maybe about each one as I go through them? You can let me know when to when to change. Yes. So yeah. you can hop on to the next slide here. Uh, so the there's two uh, marina style docks that are being applied for um, under the authority of Part 301. Um, these two docks are a 40 foot long single pier out to a 70 foot long perpendicular extension with five 10 foot long. Uh, finger piers extending off um, this structure. All the docks in this orientation are four foot wide. Um, and then including that, the first marina dock is located 235 feet from the, or is proposed to be located 235 feet from the northern property boundary. And the southern marina dock is proposed to be 196 feet north of the southern property line. And you can go on to the next one. And then there are two seasonal fishing docks that are also proposed as a result of this project that was applied for. One is proposed to be another singular 40 foot long pier out to a T-shaped extension with two, um, with a 20 foot long, four foot wide T-shape at the end of it. 
The other configuration that is proposed is a 40 foot long uh, pier with a section that is two 10 foot by four foot um, perpendicular extensions extending to the right of that configuration. And then the following slide will show the orientation of the, of the proposed docks that were applied for. So the next slide here. And so this diagram here shows what is being applied for in the location that these docks are proposed to be placed. Right. It looks like uh, that's our slides. And so now we're at the Q&A portion. So this will be the uh, point in time where you have an opportunity to ask a question uh, for Keenan or Joe. Uh, you can submit those questions using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, just type your question in there and send it to us. Uh, you can also click the hands icon at the bottom of your screen. That will raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, if you're on the phone and calling in, it looks like we have a few call phone and callers, you can type pound two if you're on the phone. And what that will do is raise your hand in Zoom. Um, and then we'll call on you using the last four digits of your phone number. And so what we'll do is just kind of go between any questions that come in the Q&A and um, people who have their hands raised. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I should also mention before we get started that uh, this is an opportunity to ask questions. If you have a statement that you want to make on the project, that'll come later. We're going to save that for the hearing part uh, of tonight's activities. So just hold on to that. All right. Uh, the first question is, is there a diagram that shows the size of the docks on the lake instead of just the place that they are attached to the shore? I can speak to that. On the application, there was not a, um, I guess, site plan that showed where, um, where they're at with the size there, um, just the orientation and dimensions of the docks and then the location on the shoreline. All right, thanks, Keenan. Um, description was for two docks, but the diagram only showed one. Please confirm. Yes, so on the application, that diagram that shows just the one dock, it's the same dock orientation that was proposed for both locations. So instead of having two that show um, the overall layout, it's just the one showing that is proposed at both those marina dock locations. All right, thanks for that question and thanks, Keenan. Does the current dock extend 70 feet out into the lake? Do you want me to answer that, Ryan? Yeah, if you're, if you're able. Yeah, it, uh, the, the existing dock extends 52 feet waterward of the ordinary high water mark. Uh, the new dock uh, is uh, going to extend, you know, because the 54 feet that you see on the site plan doesn't uh, include the approach from the upward, the upland landward portion of that dock to the point to where it gets to the ordinary high water mark. So the actual uh, waterward extension of that dock is less than 50 feet. Uh, and depending upon water levels, is probably going to be somewhere between 42 and 48 feet. All right. Th thanks, Joe. Um, next question, and there's a couple of questions that are similar, I think related to some of the, the comments uh, and, and the number of slips. It uh, looks like each Trident dock would serve at least 10 boats, but it was stated that only 12 boats maximum would be docked if the, if the person heard correctly. Are you saying that slips won't be used? And why wouldn't the docks be used at maximum capacity? Yeah, uh, I could think I can respond to that. The uh, When you look at the configuration, the configuration is to accommodate boats of wider beam, which is uh, uh, the pontoon boats that have historically uh, been utilized in that area. Um, uh, so that's why they're wider. You're not putting, when you look at the spaces in between the finger piers, you're not talking about two docks in those space or two boats in those spaces, you're talking about one boat in that space. And like I said, you know, there, there is no artifice to this approach. You know, it's not, we're not, you know, giving you a big dock and then we're going to put 24 boats in there. We are willing to accept 
um, a permit condition that says that you know for uh, you know for a, a applicant owned or applicant controlled boats that there'll be no more than uh, twelve. And historically, there's been twelve or thirteen. So you're just not going to see the dramatic increase in boat usage and boat population, you know, from this operation uh, anyway, you know, on Turtle Lake. All right, thank you, Joe. All right. Next question is, um, are basically stating that, well, they then the applicant, or the intro was not correct. They say four docks, but it's really eight docks. Can you confirm whether, not docks, I guess, but uh, yeah, is it really eight docks or four docks? I guess they're looking for clarification. So I can, what was applied for was four separate dock structures. So okay. not eight dock structures being proposed, it was four separate dock structures being proposed okay. on the application. All right, maybe that's where the clarification um, I think that's for the clarification help as dock structures. Uh, will the docks be removed every year? Yes, the, the, it's it, you know the 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 uh, the new docks will be seasonal, where the old docks are are uh, are obviously permanent. They're anchored into the uh, into the bottomlands, so it's a much better use of the resource, uh, less impactful to the bottomlands, much less impactful to uh, to fish and other aquatic resources. All right, um, thank you. Uh, is there one boat dock and two other fishing docks then? I can speak to that. Um, per, as proposed on the application, there is two boat docks and two docks that were proposed as fishing docks. Thanks, Keenan. Um, what is the permitting status of the old docks that are currently in the water? I'm, I'm assuming if, uh, I don't know, anything you could speak to, I guess I'm assuming that was, the question is whether they were permitted or not, or if they need to be permitted to be removed, or if that's part of the application. I don't know, I guess take it where, where you think it should go. Yes. Yeah. So the permitting status of the docks that are existing on the shoreline above the Turtle Lake campground fall outside of our statute of limitations. And so any configuration, any mod modifications to the docks that are existing there would require a permit, but they are not currently under a permit, but they fall outside of Eagle statute of limitations to pursue any compliance on that. Okay, thanks, Keenan. Uh, is there a possibility that non, and then in quotations, applicant controlled boats would be able to dock there without oversight i'm assuming that means docks that aren't or uh, boats that aren't associated with uh there is no uh, there is no uh uh intention to have any kind of transient accommodations uh we're not you know the, there's not going to be uh, you know we'll, we'll do the best we can to police people from uh you know basically pulling up for any kind of transient purpose but if we don't own the boat, you know, we, you know, we do own the docks and we can tell people that, look, you're not, you know, allowed to be uh, here and it's inconsistent with our permit. But uh, can we stop people from pulling up and dropping somebody off? Probably not, you know, uh, but certainly it will not be part of our permit. And we do not intend to have any kind of uh, transient uh, uh, accommodations available. Thanks for that clarification. Um, so this is in follow-up to Keenan's comment about the statute of limitations for compliance. The question is what what are the what is the statute of limitations? I'm not sure if it means what is it or if it's what the period of time is. Anything you can say further? Yes. So our statute of limitations is six years. So we cannot pursue anything with compliance that is past six years or six years prior from this date. Okay, thank you. Uh, will boats be docked on the fishing docks? No. Okay. 
Uh, will any of the wetlands removed from the applicant shoreline in the last decade be restored as part of the project? If not, how will the new docks improve the wetlands? I'm not aware of any uh, wetlands that were removed. Um, and if it was, it was long before my clients uh, owned the property. Um, uh, the current wetlands are being protected because the approaches to the docks will be upland and will not be in the wetland area. Okay, yeah, thank you for that clarification. All right. Uh, could someone from Eagle please discuss the status of the March 2023 violation notice to Mr. Bonney? Is the applicant currently in compliance with laws applying to the shoreline of Turtle, Turtle Lake? At this time, yes, the applicant is currently in compliance with all the laws applying to the shoreline in this location. Um, another staff member in our compliance unit, compliance and enforcement staff, um, handled that, so I'm not going to speak to that compliance issue at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next next two are somewhat related. Uh, at one time, the campground adopted internal rules restricting speedboats. Will that continue, or will the new docks permit docking of more powerful boats? And then the other question is, will there be any limit on size or capacity of vessels docked at the marina? So they're kind of, I guess, both related to the vessels that would be docked there. You know, I guess I can't speak to, you know, what the prior rules and, and conditions were. I, I can tell you that the applicant has explained to me that their sole goal is basically to maintain what they have done in the past and in the history and maintain the history of what they've accommodated in the past, which as I understand it have been pontoon boats and, and, and boats with, you know, limited or, or, you know, you're not going to put a, you know, a 28 foot boat with a, you know, 400 horse, you know, motor on it. I, I can't imagine that that would be appropriate. Uh, but right now there isn't, I haven't been given any parameters as far as, you know, uh, what the, what the number, I, I, actually the number we know, the configuration or, uh, you know, power structures of those watercraft, I really couldn't speak to. Okay. Thanks for the information, Joe. Um, Next question, I think I can answer, but Keenan and Joe, if you want to chime in, feel free. To, will the applicant slides be available to the public after this hearing? Um, so the hearing is recorded, so you'll be able to watch the recording and the slides. And I believe the slides were taken from the permit application. So you should be able to access and our My Waters uh, or My Enviro database, which I'll provide some information in a little bit. And I think there was some. Um, a posting in the chat that included some my, my Enviro information. So you should be able to see the diagrams in my Enviro. Um, hope that helps. Okay. Next question. Uh, is Turtle Lake a quote unquote no wake lake? There have been people water skiing behind a pontoon boat on the lake. So not anybody know that strictly related to this project. Yes, I can yeah. speak on that. Um, the no wake regulations are not a part of our part 301 in lakes and streams protection. Um, at this time, that is under the DNR Marine Safety Act. Um, and Turtle Lake is not a no wake lake at this time. Um, but again, that is outside of our review, outside of Eagle's criteria in this. That is a Marine Safety Act. Um, yes. Gotcha. Right. Thanks, Keenan. Next question. Um, what is the last date to submit comments that allow them to be considered? Um, this is a good question because it's actually my next slide. I'll bring it up here. Um, and let, again, I guess you have anything to add. It looks like it's open for 10 days, the, uh, the comment period, which is uh, November 5th, 2023. And this might be a good, I'm not seeing any other questions right now. So this might be a, a good um, Oh, wait, I had one just, that just came in. How many docks are allowed per 100 feet of frontage? Is 
So this would be, I think, a permitting question for Joe or Keenan. Yes, I can answer that question. So we don't review how many docks are necessarily allowed within a hundred foot of frontage. What we review is, you know, public trust impacts and impacts to riparian rights. So the riparian rights we're reviewing to make sure that the boat activity for the docks, for the, the mooring, is not impacting an adjacent property owner, is not preventing them from getting to their docks, as well as occupying public trust waters in a way that prevents people from accessing areas of the lake. So we don't have an answer for how many docks for 100 feet, um, but in a nutshell, we're you know reviewing riparian rights and public trust impacts. And, and also keep in mind that the campground uh, has over 1,100 frontage feet on the lake and the closest infrastructure is over is, is approximately 200 feet from either the northern or southern boundaries uh, and thus uh, you know that it was planned specifically for that uh, purpose to try to stay as you know to to minimize those potential uh, navigation conflicts and and public trust uh, impact concerns all right thank you joe the um, next one is uh, kind of a liability question, it looks like. Is Turtle Lake Campground responsible for the activity done on the lake? I'm, I, I guess I don't know the context of this. I'm assuming it means what actions they take on or what they're doing on the lake. Turtle Lake would be, Turtle Lake Campground would be the responsible party for any activities done, such as any dredge, fill, structure on bottom lands. Um, they would be, you know, the applicant and the responsible party if anything was done in violation of our Part 301. As far as boating activity and all that, I can't speak to that. That's not under our Part 301 review criteria. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no, that, that's going to be a law enforcement issue with uh, Marine Safety Patrol or a local sheriff. Gotcha. Perfect. Thanks. Um, will the applicant statements about how the marina will be run and what its impacts will become be binding permit conditions if the permit is granted? If so, what uh, would be the penalty if those conditions are violated? So it sounds like, uh, I don't know, Keenan and Joe, if you're able to talk about this at all, or I mean, just about the permit itself might be helpful and what's in the permit. Well, uh, you know, just from my perspective, I guess, it, you know, I thought that it was uh, extraordinary that, you know, that that the applicant was willing to raise his hand and say, you know, we're, we're not asking, you know, it, even though the configurator, the, 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 the geometry and configuration could allow a larger number of boats, we don't want to do anything different than what we've always done. Um, they, they actually just want to improve the existing structure, improve the water quality. They're not asking for anything other than what they have. As a matter of fact, they have 13 boats now. Um, so, you know, it's actually one less boat. Uh, so I think uh, for them to, you know, voluntarily uh, restrict themselves says a lot about the character and the, and the intentions uh, of the, uh, of the campground owners. So I, I guess, you know, hopefully that answers the question. Oh, and, and also just uh, if we violate, I mean, there are our permits in jeopardy. I mean, why would we violate? I mean, you, you know, Eagle could revoke our permit. There's a whole host of administrative and or civil or criminal penalties for violation. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, if there's one thing that after 30 years of doing this, I'm aware of is that, you know, Eagle is not bereft of enforcement tools, you know, in the event that there is, a, you know, a, a, a non-compliance issue. Thanks, Joe. Is there anything, uh, Joe Haas or Keenan, you that you wanted to add, or? Yeah, I can, I can talk about that. You know, at this time, a permit decision has not been made. We are still in the review process, but typically within our permitting process, we have the authorized activities and those conditions. And you know, if those conditions or the authorized activity, you know, if the project is done not in compliance with those. Uh, aspects of the permit, we would seek compliance into restoration or into permit compliance to ensure that the permit is being followed. 
Um, and that is the first step. And I don't know if Joe has anything to add to that or. Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Um, I would just, you know, there might be some legal mechanism if we had enough concern over locking down the exact number of slips that were to be used because it's hard to police, you know, we get five years beyond our permits are good for five years. Um, after that, it's a little bit more difficult for us to enter into, you know, it's hard for us to police the number of boats on a small marina or a small docking system. We don't have the staff to police this. Um, and, and so, um, I would just, uh, say if we've got a, a very real and, and justifiable concern over the number of boats out here, there might be, a, you know, we've had people, uh, project proponents offer a, an easement or something saying that, you know, we're only going to use this, this, um, this footprint. Um, I don't know if that's the best mechanism here. I'm just sort of uh, 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 speaking off the cuff here. Might no, be an option. No. No, I think that that was a. I think that helped uh, answer the question. It did for me anyway. So yeah, thank you all. Um, we're at about time, so we're just going to go through one or two more questions before we move on. Um, as we're at the time, we're going to have to start moving on to the rest of the hearing. How many people? And then maybe we're not able to answer this with anyone here. But the question is, how many people utilize the campground each season, and and how many of them, or proportion, use the docks? I don't know if, if there's anything we can state on that not a not a clue <laughs> sorry all right next question and this will be this will be our final question then um there are a few more in here but we got to a lot of them we answered 23 so far which is a lot in the short amount of time that we've had what is the nature of the fill placed in the wetland fringe or turtle lake mentioned in the March 2023 violation notice. I, I my understanding is is that that was found not to be a violation. That any of the uh, that the, there was uh, some activity there, but it was not in the wetland and it was not deposited waterward at the ordinary high water mark. But Keenan's probably in a better position to address that. Yes, uh, you know I was not the staff that handled. Um, that March 23 violation notice. Um, I cannot speak on that. At this time, I know it was brought into compliance. Um, as a part of our, you know, statute, we can't accept an application on a parcel with an outstanding violation. So if there was a violation that still existed on that site, we'd be unable to accept an application for that project. Okay. Thank you both. Um, this is going to conclude our Q&A session. Yeah, yeah, thanks to our panelists uh, and for all of you for asking such great questions. Um, we're going to go on to the next part, which is the hearing part. But before we do that, we're going to talk about the other ways to submit an official comment uh, via MyWaters. Um, so you, if you don't want to make a comment tonight, you can do it in our MyWater system. You can, or actually MyEnviro. It's MyEnviro now. Um, Provide your comments directly to, to my Enviro by accessing the public hear, hearing event under submission HPT C1WHYA3PN. And the link is in front of you and was put in the chat. Um, then, so this will take you directly to uh, where you can make a comment. Uh, however, you will, if you're able to access my Enviro and you should be able to access the permit application, you can still access it, but it isn't directly through this link but you can access those materials that we talked about via my Enviro. Um, you can also submit comments by mail to Eagle Water Resources Division, Cadillac District Office, 120 West Chapin Street, C-H-A-P-I-N, uh, Cadillac, Michigan, 49601. And I'm kind of reading some, this in detail for callers on the phone in case you're wondering. Uh, the comment period after the public hearing, as we talked about, will be open for 10 days, which is November 5th, 2023. And with that, we're going to kick off the hearing portion. So, Keenan, would you like to read the opening statement for us, please? Yes, I can read the opening statement here. So, good evening, everybody. My name is Keenan Cooper. I am the District Representative in the Water Resources Division of the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy, EGLE. 
I will be serving as the hearings officer for this public hearing on Eagle submission number HPT C1WHYA3PN. With me tonight is Joe Haas, Water Resource Division Supervisor for the Cadillac and Gaylord District Offices. To describe how this event is going to work tonight, I will give you some background information about why we are here. I will then describe the purpose of the hearing and how your comments will be used. Following that, I will outline the procedure, procedures under which we will take your comments and then describe what will happen after tonight's hearing. It will be time. It will then be time for you to provide comments and we will spend the majority of time tonight listening to those comments. At the end of the hearing, I will read the closing statement. By way of background information, the Water Resources Division is responsible for administering a variety of programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and the Great Lakes. These programs regulate certain activities such as dredging or filling a lake, stream, or wetland, constructing a dam, constructing a marina, placing shore protection, or constructing docks, and building in a designated critical sand dune area, wetland, or floodplain. The law governing those responsibilities is the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, 1994, Public Act 451, as amended. As amended. This will be referred to as Act 451. We are here tonight because Turtle Lake Campground has proposed the following. They are proposing to remove four existing permanent docks and install a new seasonal marina. The proposed structures are two trident style, trident style season do seasonal docks measuring 40 foot long by four foot wide with a 70 foot long by four foot wide perpendicular extension with five finger docks measuring four foot long by four foot wide or 10 foot long by four foot wide. One seasonal dock measuring 40 foot long by four foot wide with a perpendicular extension measuring 20 foot long by four foot wide and one more seasonal fishing dock measuring 40 foot long by four foot wide with an extension measuring eight foot long by 10 foot wide. In order for a permit to be granted, Eagle must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet certain criteria set by part 301 in lakes and streams of Act 451. In general, we must consider the effects of the proposed project on Turtle Lake. When reviewing an application for permit under the provisions of part 301 of Act 451, Eagle is charged to make the following consideration as required by section 30106 of part 301. The department shall issue a permit if it finds that the structure or project will not adversely affect the public trust or riparian rights, and the department shall not grant a permit if the proposed project or structure will unlawfully impair or destroy any of the waters or other natural resources of the state. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in the new seasonal marina proposed by Turtle Lake Campground an opportunity to provide information that Eagle can use in making the decision whether or not to issue a permit. Please recognize that Eagle can only use the information you provide if it relates to the criteria Eagle must, that Eagle must use in making a decision. Some of you may simply want to express your support or opposition to the project. We will be happy to make note of your position, but please understand that Eagle is, by law, not allowed to base our decision on whether or not there's widespread support or opposition to the project. In just a moment, I'll outline the procedures we will use for taking your comments. But before I do so, I need to mention that the notice of this hearing was published in the Traverse City Record Eagle on October 15th, 2023, and on the Eagle calendar on October 10th, 2023. As we discussed at the beginning of the informational session, if you have a comment to provide, raise your hand in the Zoom toolbar. To ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we will follow these steps. First, the applicant and or their consultant has already had an opportunity to describe the proposed project. Second, we will then call on those who have indicated in their registration that they would like to speak. After that, we will call on all those that raised their hand in their Zoom toolbar that they would like to make a comment if they haven't already been called upon. As a reminder, if you are participating in this hearing via telephone today, follow the directions of the moderator on how to identify that you would like to make a comment. You may also submit your comments to Eagle via the My Enviro portal, email, or US mail. When all the comments have been completed, we will ask if anybody else would like to make a statement. When your name is called, your microphone will be unmuted. And as you begin your comments, please state your name and any group or association that you may represent. Each person will be given four minutes to make their comments. We will indicate to you when you have a minute left. Please begin wrapping up your comments and end within the allotted time. If need be, we will indicate when your time has ended. I ask that we all be courteous and respectful to one another tonight. Please also recognize that Eagle staff is here tonight to provide a fair opportunity for you to express your comments on the proposed project and listen to those comments. 
This hearing is being recorded and your comments will be a part of the information Eagle will consider in making its decision on whether or not to issue a permit on the proposed project. The public comment period for this public hearing is open for 10 days from the date of this hearing ending on November 5th, 2023. Additional information and comments submitted in writing during the 10 day public comment period will also be considered in Eagle's decision. Following the close of the public comment period, Eagle will make a decision to either issue a permit for the project as proposed or with modifications or send a letter of denial. You may find out what the decision is by checking the Eagle Mind Viral Portal website and searching for the application number HPTC1WHYA3PN. Thank you for your attention. We will begin calling the names of those who has indicated they would like to make a statement. All right, thank you, Keenan. Um, as Keenan mentioned, we're gonna start uh, by calling off names who indicated during registration that they wanted to make a comment. Uh, I have six, a list of six people who indicated that. And then after that, we're going to go to people who have their hands raised. And it will be one comment per person. And so if you have anyone else on the line when you're called upon that wants to make a comment, just let me know that when, um, when you're called upon that you have somebody else there who would like to make a comment. I'll give you a one minute heads up uh, that we're nearing the end of your time of four minutes. Everybody will get four minutes. And again, if you're on the phone, you can select pound two to raise your hand and we'll call on you using the last four digits of your phone number when your turn is up. All right, so with that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I list the first person and then the person who's up next, just so you have an idea of that your turn is coming. Um, and we'll begin. Oh, also, please identify any affiliation um, if you have any. So with that, Roger Williams is up first. So we're going to unmute you, Roger. And then you're going to have an opportunity. You can mute yourself, unmute yourself, rather. It looks like you're unmuted on our end. You would just need to find the mute button on the bottom of your screen. Is yeah. it, Roger? Okay, thank you. I'm Roger Williams, and I'm a... Uh camper at the Turtle Lake Campground. I have a seasonal site there and I've camped for two or three years at the site and I'm uh, familiar with the exi existing dock situation and I feel that the new docks that are proposed are much better for the shoreline environment at Turtle Lake and I cer certainly wholeheartedly support the uh, campground initiating the, the new docks. Yeah, thank you for your comment, Roger. All right, next up is uh, Sarah Ross, and then after Sarah, it's Lisa Riley. So Sarah, looks like you're unmuted on our end, and you can begin when you're ready. Um, Ryan, the attorney actually did a great job covering some of the stuff that I had listed, so I can answer questions or make a comment later, but I think I'm all set with the comments. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you. All right, so uh, let's see, Lisa Riley is up next. And then after Lisa is Marty Hillbrands. So uh, Lisa, we're gonna find you. And there's no, okay, it looks like you're not on. All right, so it doesn't look like we can find Lisa. Um, and if you're under another account, we can get to you um, when we get to the raised hands. Uh, Marty Hillbrands is up next, and then after Marty is Heidi Alt. So Marty, you're unmuted. You can begin when you're ready. Are you there, Marty? All right, looks like your microphone is unmuted, but we can't hear you. You might have to work on changing your settings in Zoom or turning your microphone volume up if you can. Um, so what we'll do is we'll move on to the next person and come back to you, Marty, if you're able to, to figure that out. Otherwise, you can also call in using the dial-in number during registration. All right. So we will come back to Marty. Uh, Heidi Alt, and then after Heidi is Peter Alt. So Heidi, looks like you are unmuted on our end. Um, and you can unmute yourself and begin when you're ready. You should see on the microphone button, uh, the mute unmute button on the lower part of your screen to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? 
Yep, we can hear you. So I'm so hard to know. I'm a seasonal at the campground. I do feel that the campground's just maintaining and not growing. I completely agree with um, maintaining the current boats. Um, as for um, Turtle Lake, you know, there's no lifeguard on duty. It is a swim at own risk. But with the public seeing our boat launch, um, that is definitely have more of an impact than the campground itself does. Uh, the docks are for private campers only, not public. I do feel that Turtle Lake's a good host, even with all sports lake. We do, um, the campground does deteriorate and I've seen them turn away jet skiers in any massive boats and tries to get them to go to uh, bigger lakes in the area. And I do feel that they've always complied with Eagle and that it would look nice. So I do agree with the um, maintaining of the docks. Okay, thanks for your comment, Heidi. All right, uh, so next up is Peter Alt. And then after Peter, we're gonna go back to Marty and see if we can get Marty um, Marty's comment. So Peter, it looks like you're unmuted. You can begin when you're ready. Hi, my name is Pete Alt and I'm a Traverse City resident. Uh, and I just wanted to make a brief comment about the campgrounds request. I've been a seasonal camper out there for going on four years now. While I do not personally use the docks, I see the families and kids that do. And whether or not they're on their pontoon boats or they're just teaching their kids how to fish, I think this is just an amazing opportunity and quite an improvement for everybody involved. I personally would much rather see the boats at a new dock and kids having a place to fish than having boats beached everywhere on the lake, even the safety aspect of that alone. Um, I, I think the campground is trying to make a much needed improvement and it's all at their cost. I hope you guys would please consider their requests and approve it. It just seems like a win-win situation for everybody. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for your comment, Peter. All right, so Marty, let's see here if I can find you. Uh, let's see, is Marty still on? Yeah, there he is. Mar Marty, can you hear us? All right, it looks it looks like your mic still isn't working. So what we'll do is if you can, um, we're gonna show the other ways to make a comment a little later on if you, if you need to make a comment. Uh, you can do it by another way, one of those other ways that we talked about, um, or you can raise your hand and we'll call on you again uh, if you're able to get your microphone issue uh, fixed, so. All right, so we're going to move on to the raised hands at this point. Uh, so if you haven't made a comment yet, uh, you can raise your hand in Zoom. Um, if you're on the phone, select pound two, and you can make your comment uh, when you're called upon. So the first person we have is a phone-in caller. Last four digits, 1038. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, you can begin when you're ready. All right, and there is going to be two people speaking um, through this line as well. So okay. my name is Samantha Bauer, and I'd like to make a statement on behalf of Turtle Lake. I believe the docks would be an improvement overall for Turtle Lake. They would now be made of aluminum rather than traded lumber, decreasing the amount of chemicals contaminating the lake. There would be less bank erosion due to the boats mooring on the shoreline if the docks are present. The docks will be removed, as we've already stated, during spring and fall to protect the nesting of birds and the spawning of fish, to protect further the habitat of the lake and the waters. Um, there would be the same number of docks, which isn't increasing what's already pre-existing. So it's an overall benefit to the beautiful Turtle Lake and its wildlife. So I, I support it. And there is another person to speak on Turtle Lake's behalf. Okay, they can begin uh, whenever, whenever they're ready. Okay, my name is James Schroeder. I'm speaking on behalf of Turtle Lake. Um, like was mentioned before, it's much better for the wildlife, the fishing aspect. Um, 
and like stated, they're going to pull the docks, remove the docks in the fall, put the docks back in, in the spring for all the spawning fish and nesting birds in that area and other aquatic wildlife. Um, I think overall it would be an improvement based on, like Sam had stated, the treated lumber uh, seeping chemicals into the lake as opposed to a steel, or a, I'm sorry, an aluminum rather than steel that rusts. Um, I think overall it would be a great improvement. So that is all. All right. Is, is there anybody else on the line who would like to make a comment? Uh, not on this line, nope. Okay, perfect. Thank you both uh, for making those comments. All right, and it looks like Heidi Alt is next, and it looks like we have a, a couple different people logged in. It's Heidi. <clears throat> so we're going to unmute one of them. And Yeah, um, hi, Ryan. Hi there. How's it going? Good. Who, who is good, good. Uh, hey, my name's Nick. Um, I'm Nick. actually Heidi's husband. She okay. forgot to unmute me when we were in there. Oh, sorry, we missed it. Not a problem, not a problem. Hey, I just want to say um, this is just a great idea. I mean, all we're doing is improving the infrastructure of these docks. Uh, and and as far as the lake itself, it is an all-seasons lake or all-sports lake. There, there, We can police as much as we possibly can, but we cannot police everything on the lake. Um, and I know everybody even across the lake, they do just as much as everybody else on Turtle Lake's side. Um but we do we do a pretty dang good job of of making sure everybody is safe. And I know improving these docks is going to make everybody safe. Uh, all we're doing, all we're trying to do is improve the infrastructure. We're not adding, we're not taking away. We're not we're just we're just trying to make everything right and improve improve Turtle Lake. It's not going to hurt anything. And that's all I have to say. All right. Thanks for your comment. Is there anyone else on the line? Yeah, hasn't... I'm going to hand it over to my sister-in-law. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Thank Hi. You. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Sarah Boylan, and I also agree with Turtle Lake. We take pride in the campground, and we just want to improve what we have. We're not asking for anything more. Um, we would have the same amount as we already have. We want to preserve the wildlife. We're, we just want the people to have the best that they can and be safe. And, yep, that's all I have to say. Thanks for your comment, Sarah. Is, uh, is there anybody else on that line, or are you the last one? I am the last one. All right. Yeah, thanks for making the comment. Uh, we'll move on to the next uh, person then. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right, uh, next up is Paula Eberhardt. So we're going to unmute you, Paula, and then you can unmute yourself uh, using the microphone button at the bottom of your screen to begin your comment. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. You can begin when you're ready, Paula. Okay, I'm a seasonal camper at Turtle Lake, and I've camped there since Mr. Bonnie has owned the campground. Um, the Bonnies are great campground hosts and they comply to all the laws that apply. <clears throat> the campground is kept clean and it's always at a professional appearance. The docks that have been here since the 1970s, I feel the new docks would be a great improvement. They would have less impact on the shoreline, which would be better for the fish, the turtles, frogs, etc. And the new docks being taken in and out seasonally would be better for the fish spawning. The Bonnies are conscientious people, and I feel they would not do any improvements that would jeopardize the lake or the property. So I feel this would be a great improvement to the property. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment. All right, it looks like we have a different, someone else logged in as Heidi Alt, so we're gonna unmute um, Heidi Alt. Uh, oh, is there I'm someone sorry. else who has, hasn't made a comment? On this line? I think that was a mistake. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yep. No problem. Thank you. How do I un no. All right. Uh, next up is David Villarreal. So, David, you are unmuted and you can begin when you're ready. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Okay. Great. 
My name's David Villarreal. Uh, my wife, Marnell, and I are seasonal campers there at Turtle Lake. Uh, we do own a pontoon, and we do dock there. And it's an 18-foot pontoon. Uh, it only has a 50 horse. It's not like we're going speeding across, around the lake. Uh, the improvement to the docks, I think, are needed. Um, to what, what they're uh, proposing with these aluminum docks that they're putting in, I think they would bring a really nice look and safety to uh, Turtle Lake and around the surrounding area. I, I did see some docks there. I don't know if those are the ones or not, and they are beautiful. Uh, for what they have now, it is, it's time for a change. They have to maintain them. It's time to upgrade them. And I think this is a great opportunity to have that done. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your comment, David. All right, next, next up, uh, Rod and Ethel Gross. Looks like you are unmuted on our end. Uh, you can unmute yourself and begin when you're ready. And you should see a uh, mute unmute button at the bottom of your screen that will uh, unmute your microphone so that you can make your comment. Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, I've... Um... I've been coming to that campground since I was like 10, 11 years old, and I'm 66 now. And I've seen nothing but improvement after improvement. Um, safety, follow the bonnies follow everything, a letter to the law. This would be another just another example of how well they do in respect to the lake and the land. I'm all for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Next up is Stephanie Todd. Uh, we are you are unmuted, and you can begin when you're ready. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Todd. I am a seasonal camper there for about three years now, and I do support the new docks. I believe that the new docks would be good environmentally, and I think that they would be definitely much safer. Um, then what they've got currently it would be a much better upgrade to the campground and I would definitely support it. All right, thanks for your uh, comment, Stephanie. Thank you. All right, next up is Brooke uh, DeShazer or DeShazier. Brooke, are you there? I am here, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. You can begin when you're ready. Okay, um, I am Brooke DeShazer and I am a seasonal there and we have been at Turtle Lake for seven years. Um, I now have adult children and I just wanna talk about the fishing docks for the kids. It's one of the things that's so important for the kids these days. You know, they ride their bikes there, they play there. It's very important for the kids to be able to stay fishing. And also my boat is one of the boats that are docked there. Um, and at the end of the year, when we put things away and it happened a prior to, uh, we get fish hooks in the back side of our boat, which is coming from people who are fishing on the lake. So it really excites me to hear that they're, they're going to be a little shorter, which means that the fishermen on other boats are on kayaks, which we see a lot happening. Um, it would be great to have the stocks just a little shorter so our boat isn't so far out where it's going to be catching the fish hooks that have happened in the past in the last couple of years. So that is uh, full support on both for the fish on, on the docks for the fishing or I apologize for the kids fishing and then also for the boats to be docked. Okay, thanks for your comment, Brooke. Yes, thank you. All right, next up we have a phone in caller, a 0650. Looks like you are unmuted on our end. It should ask you uh, you should be able to unmute. Hi, can, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, hi, my name is uh, Nick Naros. I uh, actually live just uh, south of the campground. Um, I share the, the fence line with the campground, and we've been there about eight years now. And in regards to the docks, I, I, I am for it, and I'm for it because it's, you know, having new clean looking docks um, and adding some organization to where the boats are docked, I think would just improve the lake overall. 
because you're going to take away people that are used to, you know, putting their boats up on the beach. And, um, you know, so if they got a place that's more secure for it, and it sounds like they're going down an actual dock, so I, I see that as a positive win. I also do want to note that being right next door to the campground, um, it, you, you know, Turtle Lake Campground and family, they've been tremendous neighbors. Um, all our neighbors on Turtle Lake are great people. Um, but when you live right next to a campground, you're not sure what you're going to get. And I can honestly say that experience has been very, very positive. Um, and they've been great neighbors to have there. And uh, most importantly, they've been great stewards of the lake, the way I see it. Being, uh, being a sportsman in the way I, I love northern Michigan, uh, they've done a great job maintaining that. So I am definitely in support of it. It sounds like it would be a good organization to, on the lake, new set of docks, could be cleaner looking. And um, um, that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you for your comment. Okay, thank you. All right, looks like Rod and Ethel Gross, you have your hand raised again. Is there someone else on the line that wanted to make a comment? No, we're, that was an accident. <laughs> okay, yep, no problem, thank you. All right. All right, so at this point, that is my last raised hand. We'll give it a couple more a little bit more time here in case someone hasn't made a comment yet. Uh, so if you haven't made a comment yet and would like to make one and you're on the phone, you can select pound two, that will raise your hand in Zoom, or you can raise your um, hand in Zoom at the bottom of your screen if you're logging in with your computer, and then we'll call on you so that you can make your comment. Um, if we don't have any further comments, then we're gonna close out the hearing uh, and move on to the next part, which will be other ways to make an official comment again, and then who to contact with additional questions. So I'm still not seeing any other raised hands. Uh, so Keenan, would you please uh, close out the hearing for us? Yes. Thank you and for your comments and cooperation. We appreciate your interest in the proposed project and that you took the time to be here tonight. As indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you may submit additional written comments until November 5th of 2023. Following the close of the public comment period, we will consider all comments received and make a decision on the proposed project. Just to remind those that may still want to submit a comment, comments can be submitted via my Enviro portal, email, or U.S. mail. The hearing is now closed. Thank you again. All right. Thank you, Keenan. Um, and, and again, that's uh, submission HPTC1WHYA3PN. As Keenan mentioned in my Enviro uh, or by mail. And again, for our phone and callers, it's at Eagle Water Resources Division, Cadillac District Office, 120 West Chapin Street, Cadillac, Michigan, 49601. And as Keenan mentioned, it'll be open until uh, November 5th. And then if you have additional questions or we didn't happen to get your question um, in the QA session, you can contact. Uh, Keenan Cooper, who's an environmental quality analyst, and Keenan's phone number is 989-370-7350, or by email to CooperK9, and that's spelled C-O-O-P-E-R-K-9 at Michigan.gov, and that's Michigan spelled out, M-I-C-H-I-G-A-N. Or you can contact Joseph Haas, district supervisor, uh, of the Cadillac District, Cadillac Gaylord Water Resources Division District, and Joe's phone number is 989-330-9252. And Joe's email is haasj1, so it's hasj1 at michigan.gov, M-I-C-H-I-G-A-N dot gov, in case you have any further questions. And that almost about concludes it, unless uh, actually, Joe, do you have any final comments for us? Oh, looks like you're muted, Joe. Yeah, it helps if I unclick that button. Sorry. I, I want to just thank everyone for taking the time to uh, be actively involved in tonight's hearing. It's important uh, for Eagle to have public participa participation, um, particularly when it comes to protecting our um, shared natural resources. Uh, your comments are important. Um, 
they make sure that our review of the pro proposed project is thoroughly and accurately reviewed. Um, again, thanks for your uh, cooperation. We appreciate that you have shown an interest uh, in being here tonight and taking the time to attend this evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joe. And thanks to all of our panelists um, for being here, answering the questions and uh, being here to listen to you all. And thank you all for logging in. Uh, my last thing that I have is just as a reminder, uh, we'll be sharing a closed caption copy um, of this recording uh, on Eagle's YouTube channel. So you be able to find it uh, on YouTube in case you want to watch it again or forward it on. So with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Good night.